Let's uh, now get to more reaction on the story and speak to the DA's Sivua Kwahube, who joins us uh, live now. Sivua, thank you so much for your time. Your reaction to the resignation of the Speaker of the National Assembly. Thank you very much, um, and uh, good evening to you. Of course, we are welcoming the resignation of the Speaker. We were the one political party that was resolute on saying that you know she should resign. Um, also because we are, we've always believed that a person who occupies this position of high office as uh, the leader of the National Assembly is not somebody that uh, should be facing allegations of money laundering and, uh, and corruption. And, um, and so we are welcoming the resignation because this was the ultimate outcome. However, we are also calling on law enforcement agencies to now continue with their work because we've got to make sure that we uh, enforce this culture of accountability within our, within our public service, that it's not enough that one must be politically connected in order for you to evade accountability. Of course, this means that the motion that I have tabled, the motion of no confidence that I have tabled against the Speaker in Parliament will uh, now no longer be relevant. Uh, because, of course, we pursued this uh, with the intention of achieving this very outcome, which is the resignation of the Speaker, or at least the, her removal from office. Um, this also means that the ethics complaint pertaining to this matter will no longer be relevant. But I do want to bring to your attention that there is an additional complaint, which you asked to the previous guest, that I have laid with the Powers and Privileges Committee, which pertains to the salary hike of the Secretary to Parliament. And so the Powers and Privileges complaint must continue, because remember, it's not just the Speaker that is implicated uh, in the matter, it is also the chairperson of the NCOP. And the Powers and Privileges Act does make provision for an ordinary citizen to be criminally charged should they have been found to be in contravention of the Act. Yeah, and uh, Sivu, I mean, one of the things that, that you were arguing in, in the statement that you released, especially um, when you were talking about this motion and the letter that you had now written to the Deputy Speaker, Lechisa Tsenodi, you were saying that the credibility and the integrity of the National Assembly is at stake here. So I wonder what impact would you say that these allegations and this ongoing case has had on the National Assembly? It's been absolutely devastating. I mean, I think that um, even the Speaker or uh, even Ms. Mosevuma Pisa-Magula in her letter of resignation um, essentially accedes to all the argument that we've been making that um, she believes that she no longer, it's no longer tenable for her to be in the position because it drags the name of Parliament through the mud. And it's been devastating because, I mean, she continued to use parliamentary communications channels to continue to use the, uh, the, the, the staff of parliament to communicate on her legal battles. But also chiefly amongst us, I mean, parliament must be seen as the 400 members who serve in this institution. We must be people who are entrusted to not only lead but represent South Africans. And we must uphold ourselves to a higher standard. And we cannot, it cannot be a race to the bottom. And once one of our own, the chief lawmaker in the country, as she called herself in her resignation letter, is now accused of money laundering, then it really does begin to taint and blemish the, the, the institution. And that is why we have we long called for her removal from this position because we believe that she no longer was suited. And we, it, she should have resigned earlier, quite frankly. Uh, it should have never come to this. She should have understood that this is not something that is befitting of the head of the institution, and she should have resigned earlier. Nonetheless, here we are, and uh, we want to pursue particularly that power and privilege of case because it relates to a 70% salary hike of the Secretary to Parliament, and we still none the wiser about how that happened. And I'm particularly looking forward to the outcome of that because she can still be held accountable as an ordinary citizen for being in contravention of that act. And I just want to, 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 to just emphasize this point, that we have to start changing the culture of accountability in our institutions. And people can't just simply because upon resignation and the like simply be, be, be um, uh, um, absolved of their accountability. We must pursue these things because it's the right thing to do.
Sevewa, she does say, though, that she is resigning in order to focus on this, uh, you know, ongoing investigation against her. But she says this resignation is by no means an admission of guilt on her part. And she says that she's making this decision to uphold the integrity and the sanctity of parliament. But she maintains that she's not admitting any guilt. For sure, and I mean, that is why, and that is the role of law enforcement agencies, and that is the role of the court to ascertain her innocence or not. Uh, I, I, I'm afraid I'm, I'm hard at, at uh, believing about her intention to uphold the sanctity and the integrity of parliament, because had she you know, done so, she would have essentially uh, resigned uh, about two weeks ago when the, the, this investigation came about. But nonetheless, um, we must now focus on making sure that she's, she is held accountable for all the, the complaints that have been leveled against her. And we will obviously be keeping a watchful eye um, on the law enforcement agency's investigations.